Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's begin, inshallah. Inna alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah 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 wa See, the projector is way over there. So you gotta pay attention to that one. All right. So let's uh, let's begin. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to talk to you all about, you know, whoever can attend, is this this topic, the uh, iblis. There was a conversation between iblis and Allah that took place, and we will go through some of those. I'm going to show you some ayat of Quran, and this is how I teach in Sunday school. Some of you are from previous life in Sunday school. Some of them are the current students here, and this is this is what we discuss. So just pay attention uh, to that one. A uh, question for you. Tell me, what do you know about Iblis? This is not a khutbah. You gotta talk. This is not a khutbah, so you gotta talk. What do you know about Iblis? Disobey Allah, what else do you know? You want some guide us? Anyone can talk. What else? Very good. Those are awesome. Assalamu alaikum. I have no idea. Oh, you, can, you can go sit over there and play. Right there. Yeah, right there. Okay. Yes. Those are awesome. What else? Arrogance. Very nice. What else? What else do you know about Iblis? Challenge the law. Yes. These are all the things that we're going to talk about. You're going to see the, the evidence in the, um, uh, in the Quran. From the Quranic verses. Okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, those are all good things. So here's how it starts. I'm going to talk about some parts of Surah Al-A'raf, but this is not Surah Al-A'raf. This is, this is another place in the Quran. Allah unveiled his plan. Okay? Unveiled the plan. He called a meeting. He asked all the angels to attend. So let me back up a little bit. There are angels among the creation, there was one creation, wasn't an angel, one person, he, that's, that's Iblis, Iblis is not an angel, but he did so good in obeying Allah, in listening to Allah, and anything Allah said, he did so well, he kept on getting promoted to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. He kept on getting promoted, and the promotion got to the point that he actually was among the angels. He was just mingling with the angels when Allah called this meeting. Maybe you should bring the projector on this side. Um, and Allah said the following. said, This is really important. Allah is unveiling His plan. He's saying, I am going to create a bashar. Bashar means bashar means skin. Someone, a human being, his skin will be exposed. A creature, his skin will be exposed just like you. A human being, from what? From plain. So this one, let me see if my handy dandy thingy works. This is really important. Those of you who understand Arabic. Khalaqum basharan means I'm going to, it's not there yet. I'm going to create this. This is a plan. Okay, that's what Allah says. And what else? I'm going to put some numbers. I want you to remember these things. This is one number. Step number one. Okay. Then Allah says, uh, This is two. Number two. I'm going to make him balance. What does that mean, balance? Tell me something about balance. What does that mean? It's the translation is there, right? Talk. Come on, help me out. It's not khutbah. Allah says the first thing is He's going to create someone from the mud. A bashar, human being. See this? Sawaituhu. This word? Sawaituhu. I'm going to... I put number two there underneath. Sawaituhu. He's going to be balanced. Allah says human being, I'm going to create it in a manner it will balance. Balance in what? Balance in your thoughts, balance in your actions, balance not just physically, balance on two feet, balance on your emotions, balance on every conduct that you're going to create, that you're going to carry your life. You're going to, you're going to know how to balance yourself, how to do things properly, how to do things right. 
emotional balance, mental balance, all of that. Allah is saying, that's what's going to happen to you. I'm going to give you that. And then Allah says, I'm going to give you one more ingredient. Say it again. Yeah, yeah. Fashion him is that, that, uh, that. Yeah, so that's what it is. So wait, means balance. So this is what the transition says. I'm going to fashion him. I'm going to create him. I'm going to, and there's one more word. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And then there's a special ingredient right here. Special ingredients. This is the third. Three process step. So remember this. I want you to remember this. Uh, there's three process step here. Three process steps. Okay? The first one is I'm going to create. You need to remember this because it's a quiz at the end. The second one is I'm going to fashion him. I'm going to balance him. I'm going to beautify him. I'm going to make him awesome looking. Awesome looking guy. Our gals, and then what makes you special that Allah gives you this ruh, which is usually translated as a spirit. Allah gives you this special ingredient, ruh. Ruh is the one that makes you connect to Allah. Ruh is light. Allah is light. There is a connection. This is this is what makes you a difference. This is the difference between you and cockroach. This is the difference between you and rat. This is the difference between you and a cow. Cow is made out of a plain, also out of clay. But the cow doesn't have the ruh you have. Very, very, very important for you to remember this. What makes us different? Spirit, yeah, ruh. It doesn't have the Allah's spirit in it. It has breeds in and out, just like a rat does, just like a lion does. What makes us different that that we can think that we have a choice that we can do, make a decision is this. Ruh, that's what Allah is giving a special special thing. Make sense? Keep that in mind. So this is important. This is we have to have it all we have these all this balance amongst us. All right. Now there's one other word, Surah Al Araf. Allah says, Thumma sawarnakum. The same in the previous one said, I want to balance you, I want to fashion you here. Allah says, I want to beautify you. So guess what? Every single human being, Allah says beautiful. All of you, regardless of how you look like, regardless of what you do and all that, that's Allah's promise. You have been beautified. Okay, so imagine this. Picture this with me. I did something here. Hopefully it's going to be okay with all of you. Allah says, I'm going to create this human being and ask, Allah asks all the angels to do one thing. To do one thing. After you see this incredible creation, do a sajda, right? Do a prostration. Okay? Do a prostration. That's what Allah says. Imagine this picture. Imagine that there is like during Hajj, right? You see suddenly when everyone goes to sajda, the whole thing, like two million people goes to sajda. Imagine that except one guy standing up. Everyone is in such that it's one guy. Let me show you. I asked uh, uh, generative uh, um, AI to create this for me. So here it is. That's what the guy did. Generative AI. Imagine this. Everybody is doing such that towards the light, towards Allah. Except this dude is like, what's the big deal? What are you guys? Are, what? what is this? What is this such that thing that you guys are talking about? That's what Allah says here. Allah says, I made all of you, I beautified you, and I give you those three processes. Remember those three things. Okay, three things. Except this guy. He's just standing. And he's like, you guys made out of clay, out of dirt. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? He didn't do such that. He just stood up. What are the three processes I said? Three things. Shout it out. You are made out of clay. You are balanced and fashioned. You made beautiful. What makes you special is the ruh. Here's your first lesson. We can tell. I, I can tell you the story. But what? What are we can? What can we extract out of this? Here's the first thing. Shaitan knew Iblis knew really well. He knew really well those three things. He saw those three things because he heard Allah those three things. He just looked at the first one. And said, it's not a clay. What's the big deal about clay? Why should we do this? He hid the other facts. 
he made his own facts. He made his own feelings. Here's, oh, by the way, uh, disclaimer. Disclaimer is this. That's happened to me before. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention this now. I'm going to give you examples, practical examples that's going to take place in our life, okay? Between families and societies and centers and all that. Don't tell me at the end of the day, like, come, come to me and say, why did you talk to me about this? Why did you embarrass me in front of everybody you said, you said this about me in this meeting? I don't know any one of you. I don't know any one of your stories, any one of your struggles or challenges, anything like that. I'm going to give you an example. It, got, it might strike a nerve. It might, it may not. That's what it is. Because someone came to me at the end of the day and was like, why did you say this about me in the meeting? I'm like, brother, I don't know who you are. I don't even know what, what you're talking about. I'm just giving you practical examples. That's what the whole point is. Get practical examples. Second thing, uh, second uh, disclaimer, think about this about yourself. Don't think like, oh, you know what? He just said this problem. I, can, I bet you my cousin, my, my brother, my husband, my wife has this issue. I got to tell that that's not what it is. You look internally. I'm looking internally myself. Like, okay, here's a challenge. I'm going to look at myself. How do I make sure that I take this as a lesson for me, not point to someone else? Make sense? So the, the two disclaimers. Okay. The first thing. So I said, as you, as you remember, this guy got promoted, got promoted, and got promoted. He's among the angels. Now, pay attention to this story. He has expectation. He wants to be the next one. The next promotion wants to be him. But Allah has other plans. Imagine in a, in a workplace or in a, in a family place, at workplaces make sense. Someone gets, you know, someone starts as a janitor and just goes the supervisor and becomes a manager and senior manager, and director, VP, get kept on kept on promoting. And I, I know a guy one of those guys. Uh, last uh, place I was working, the CEO was just doing a supply chain management and became so good, became a CEO at the end of the day after many, many, many years. Right? So it happens. So imagine this guy got promoted, kept on promoting um, to the ranks, and he's a VP. And the CEO, and he wants to become the senior vice president, he wants to become the CEO, but the CEO finds a new grad student, comes to the company and says, uh, guess what? Uh, he's going to be your boss. You're going to report to him. You know what's going to happen to that guy who's like, wait a second. What just happened? I am supposed to be the next one. I should, I should have been promoted. What happened? He got his feelings. He had, here's another lesson for you. We have we have our own feelings, okay? When we, when we think about our feelings and we kept on pondering upon what we are thinking over and over again, that feeling turns into facts. That, that feeling turns into facts, but that facts is not, is not grounded based on evidence, based on common sense, based on nothing. It's just our own feeling. We're like, this has to be true. It has to be true because we kept on thinking about it. This is exactly what he did. This is what exactly he did. That's a, that's a, that's a devilish thing to do. He is like, N nobody asked me. I'm supposed to be that next guy. Because what Allah said, what the part of the story, that's part two, one of these nights we're going to do, inshallah, that I, tell, that I didn't tell you is, Allah said, I'm going to create this human being in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter. And he said, this human being is made for earth. He's going to go to earth. And he's going to be a khalifa on earth which means someone who has a choice, someone who's going to make decisions. Khalifa means someone is going to go somewhere, make a decision, make a choice, and know what is right, what is wrong. That's the person who's going to do this, and he's going to rule on earth. He wanted to be, Iblis wanted to be that person, and he's like, how come I wasn't chosen for this? How come he, out of clay, is being chosen for this? So he got all the feelings internally. He didn't ask anything. He didn't ask any questions. He just stood there and was like, why should I make a sajda? The sajda is not... So here's a, another thing scholars say. There's a bunch of discussions in the, in the, in the tafsir books you're going to hear. The scholars say, oh, the sajda is for Adam. They are coming up with all the cute things. The sajda is li Adam. I mean, there's a grammatic thing here. See this lamb here? Li Adam. For Adam. Because, Allah says because he created this incredible human being balanced human being, beautiful human being, and what made this human being so awesome is because of the ruh Allah gave him, right? 
Allah says, this creation is so incredible, you should be at awe. As a result of that, all of you make such that to Allah, not to Adam. Make such that because of the Adam to Allah. That's what the sajda is about. And Iblis didn't see that part. He just saw what he saw, but he didn't want to see what is beyond that, which is the, sec the second, second or third or fifth lesson for you in life. When we discuss something, when we see something, we have to ponder, think, and contemplate and see what is the meaning behind this? What is it that I do not understand that you need to understand that? So he missed that part and he just stood there and he hid the truth and he didn't see the spirit. He didn't see the in in incredible thing. Got all, uh, got all of this? Okay. Now here's the next chapter. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what the translations are. So there's there's a bunch of translations, but a bunch of mufassirun. Uh, they come up with all sorts of. I don't want to go to techni technicality. They they come up with cute things. They saying, oh yeah, the such that was at that time was allowed for the human being. Then it got abrogated, which is a big SAT word, and it's not allowed anymore. All those things. The reality, the the uh, the kind of um, research that I have done and the one I'm convinced about is not. It's because of this incredible creation. There's some uh, scholars say that. They did, because of this creation, they did sajda to Allah, not to Adam, because of the creation of the Adam. That's what it is. But the translation says, prostrate before Adam. Yeah. Yeah, le Adam. It does, it, there are two, two ways to look at the lamb. There's lama ta'lil, which means because of this creation. That's what the grammatarians grammatia, grammatia, say that. There's no grammatics. This lamb is lama ta'lil, not lamb because of, for. There's two ways to translate this, for or because of. Advanced um, Arabic. So here's the thing. This is for you, the next lesson for you. Which means what? You, what is your self-worth? You undoubtedly will come into contact with people. It's going to be at, at your own home, unfortunately. I'm going to be, I'm going to be straight up with you. It's going to be at work. It's going to be at the places that you're going to go. It's going to be at a mall. It's going to be anywhere. You're going to see people going to be really put you down, make you feel like you're worthless. But Allah says, no, that's not what it is. What is your worth? What is your worth? Because of your creation, which means your father, Adam, which means exactly what you have, what Adam had. Because of that, Allah asked the entire angelic farm, which they don't do anything except to obey what Allah says to do, right? You know that. The angels don't do anything except what Allah tells them to do. Because of you, they all fell into such that that means you are worth something. You need to understand that. You need to be proud of that. This is huge lesson for you and I. Huge lesson, especially in this day and age. What is my self-worth? Allah created me. Allah beautified me. Allah fashioned me. Allah balanced me. And I'm one of the most incredible Allah gift Allah gave me is what? The ruh. His spirit, he gave it to me. I'm worth, I'm worth every single penny. That's what this is. If you don't get anything else out of this tonight, you gotta know you are an amazing guy because what Allah made you amazing. Because of you, all the angels do the prostration. Make sense? Okay, so here he goes. Now Allah talks to, talk to Iblis. I don't wanna translate Iblis. Iblis is a proper noun, Iblis is Iblis. Devil, shaitan, right? Those are the names. Allah gives him a, Allah says, I give you a direct order. It's Amartuk. I give you a direct order, Allah says. What stopped you? What prevented you? Ma mana'aka. What prevented you? What were you thinking? Why didn't you do what I told you to do? Everyone else did, and you're just standing up. I showed you the picture. Just standing up. What's up with that? And that's the famous words that you already know. What are the famous words that you have heard multiple times? I am, he's like, I am better. Me. Look at me. You. And he's admitting that Allah created him. He is admitting, you created me from the fire. He did create this thing from the dirt, from clay. That's what it is, from clay. So what lessons can you take out of this? 
tell me what lessons you can you can see here. There's a ton of lessons here for us. A ton. Hmm? Allah's direct order of disobedience. Huge. Arrogance, which is right there. It's written. Hmm? I'm better than you. Yeah, arrogance. What else? What other practical things that you can see that we do in our daily life? Say it again, please. Yes, that not listen. Yeah, what what practical thing do you see? Say, proud of his origin. Yes, yes, that. Yep. He makes excuses. Yes, exactly. There's a whole lot. This guy wants you to live a life of comparison. What does that mean? Tell me about life of comparison. Oh. Yeah, killer of joy. Okay. What do we do as a, when it comes to life of comparison here in life? Better than others. Here's what we do. <clears throat> hey, Bustle. You are going to junior college? <laughs> I went to the UC system. You're going just to junior college. Uh, okay, I guess it's okay for you. Alhamdulillah for you. Hey, uh, Basil's brother, you guys live in a 2200 square foot house? Mine is 5,000 square foot. It's over the hell looking. It's pretty good. Looking over the golf course. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, Dr. Abdullah, you, your, your daughter got married in a park? I went to the Hilton. We had our wedding in the Hilton, and you, yeah, I have the love for you, I guess it's, you know, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. You driving a Model 3 Tesla? Um, mine is Model X. It's powerful. It's pretty darn good. It's pretty, pretty darn good. Wants to live a life of comparison over and over again. You're just a manager, right? Guess what? I became senior manager. I'm, I'm dealing with all the projects, all the big projects. You're just a little one IT project. I'm doing the enterprise level projects, you know, that's like, that's like amazingness. That's what you want to do all the time. At the same time, it wants to make you feel worthless. He said he's made out of fire. Made out of fire, right? So what this is what he wants to do. He wants you to become argumentative. He wants you to become arrogant and argue. And when you guess what happens when you argue? You become mad. What happens when you become mad? When you're mad, you really want to give it to Basel, right? It's like, you piss me off. I want to, you want to give it to him at that moment. Why? Because you want to really burn him. This is exactly what he wants to do. He's made out of fire. He wants to burn you. He wants to burn your opponent, whoever that is. That is his motivation. And that's what he wants to do to you. Uh, I, I must pause here and tell you a story. One of the other stories. I guess when this ayah or one of the other ayahs were, were uh, being read, there was a guy, there was a scholar, not me, there was a scholar giving a, um, Imam Abu Hanifa. Who knows Imam Abu Hanifa? Some of you know Imam Abu Hanifa. Okay. He was an incredible guy. He, he is the one who codified the religion for us about 1,300 years ago or something like that. He was giving a lecture about this. One of the students sitting there was kind of obnoxious. He's like, um, Sheikh, I got a question for you. He's like, yeah, what's, uh, sure, what's the question? He's like, you said Iblis is made out of fire. Yes, that's what the Quran says, made out of fire, okay. And also you said people are gonna get punished in fire. That's what the Quran says, yeah, people wanna get punished in fire. Well, if he's from fire, how are you gonna punish fire with fire? So he explained, but the student was so obnoxious, he didn't get it. He kept on arguing, kept on debating, kept on arguing. It makes no sense. How do you fire, punish fire with fire? It doesn't make sense. So while sitting there, and he was just rolling up a little bit of dirt in there, and made a little puddle. When the student was so obnoxious, he just flicked the, the puddle and hit him right in the head. Put a little mark on his head. The student is like, why did you do that? Why did you hit me? And like, what do you mean? And I hit you. I explained, I, I gave you the answer. He's like, no. What kind of answer is this? So sued the, he sued in the court, sued the imam. And that was, that was, you know, imagine that about 
openness of the society. So the, the judge is summoned, the imam said, he is saying that you, that you abused them, that you hit him, that you um, uh, violated his rights. Imam was like, um, no, I answered his question. Like, what do you mean he answered his question? He claims that you hit him with that rock. He's like, first of all, it wasn't a rock. It was a pebble, clay. Answer his question. He's like, what, what is that? He's like, well, Allah says you, may, uh, you are made out of clay. He's made out of clay. So he wanted to know how fire could punish fire. And I explained all, with all the different, different ways he didn't understand. So I made a little clay, hit him. And clay hurt, didn't it? I asked him, did it hurt you? He's like, it hurt me. Look at the mark. He's like, that's exactly right. Clay hurts clay. So somehow fire does the fire. Allah knows how it is, how it's done. I don't know. I was just explaining to him the answer to his question. You understand that? There's a comic, right? It was good. That's what it is. So all the lessons. Here's what is, comes at a paraphrasing from the Quran, the bottom here. He wants you to be arrogant, right? He wants you to have uh, anger problems. He wants you to debate everyone. Hear this. The one who has an anger problem has an arrogance problem. Paraphrasing from the Quran. That's your next lesson. Really important to pay attention to this one. By the way, this is like I said, this is not a khutbah. Uh, questions, comments? Ask. Ask away. Alhamdulillah, I like it. It's clear as a mud. This is good. All right. So guess where they were? They were in a Jannah or a vicinity of a Jannah, right? That's where the, all the thing happened. So uh, part two of this program, if we do this, I'm going to go through, walk you through the creation, creation of Adam and the more conversation, which is related to this. But that's a PG-13. If you're not 13 years old, this, you're not allowed to be here. So that's a completely different conversation. It's, it's something, with all seriousness, um, I have not seen anyone talk about it. Anyone talk about it in, this, in a setting like, setting like this. So many awesome lessons, but it is a PG-13. So we, we should do that at some point, inshallah. So they are in a vicinity of uh, Jannah or in Jannah. That, what does that mean when Allah made the proclamation? He said, I'm going to create Adam. I'm going to go through three different steps. All the angels were there. And this Iblis was there. And he showed his arrogance and all that. Then Allah says, So several things here. Get out of here. Allah says, get out of here. Go descend. Get out. You don't belong in this, in this place anymore. Okay, that's one thing. Why? Because you showed what? Tatakabbar. What is this Tatakabbar? Yes. Extreme arrogance. And what was the arrogance? From a previous slide, what was the arrogance? Anyone? Yeah. Future student, man, you're going to pass this class. Not prostrating at Adam. Um, why? He's made out of fire. He's better. He's purer. These things, yeah, thank you. Right? He showed all levels of arrogance that we discussed. That's what he did. I'm like, okay. That's right. He wanted the promotion. Think about it this way. He wanted the recognition. He wanted the promotion. This is a rampant in our, uh, in our um, life. In household, in community, and all that, that everyone wants recognition. Everyone wants status. That's what he wanted. He wanted the status. That's what it is. Allah says, get out of here. Fakhraj inna innaka min as Okay. These are the, the steps of arrogance that I put there, the summary. Summary of arrogance. Basil, read these out loud. Come up with your own reality, not caring about facts. I deserve it more than me, so I need to compare. This is what he wants us to do all the time. These are the things. Sagir is what? What is Sagir? Anybody know the meaning? This is disgrace, but Sagir means small. Sagir means uh, insignificant. Sagir means that just meaningless. You have no, no status. That's what Allah tells him. And guess what? He takes that and he wants you to feel that way all the time. 
as much as he can. So, which means what? Anytime that you feel like, oh, I'm not worth anything, we just went through it, you're worth a whole lot because Allah told you what you're worth. This is shaitan. Say, a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem immediately. He wants to make you feel insignificant because that's what Allah says that you're insignificant. That's one of his tools in there. Make sense? Another place in the Quran, this is what Allah says. A lot of us want to compare ourselves. A lot of us want some, someone has something else. Sorry, Basil. 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 Love you too. Pick on you all the time. Wait a second. My hair is receding, man. What's up with this? I want the kind of beautiful curly hair he has. Ooh. What? Allah says, stop wishing that you had what others have. That's directly from the Quran. Constantly thinking of material stuff. Not This has nothing to do with religious stuff. This brother, mashallah, he's amazing. He's amazing in, in, uh, in uh, understanding the Quran and Arabic and all that stuff. I could be jealous of him saying, I wish I would have known as much as he does. That's fine. But when, when he says, you know what? He is driving Malo, he's driving M4. I want his M4. Then we are crossing this. Then we're crossing this Quranic line. Okay. Here comes the juicy part. So let me ask you this. It comes in, uh, in uh, ayah number 17, 18. The answer comes in ayah number 17 or 18. We are on ayah number 14 right now. Hey, Basil's, Basil's brother, you understand this? What number is this? Can you read that? Hey, you got it. Arbi. One of my favorite words is Arbi. <laughs> I love it. So 14. When about 17, 18, some of the answers are going to come. What comes in mind? Let me, let me rephrase the question. Hold on. When someone, when someone does something so horrific, something so wrong, what do you think the person is supposed to do? Awesome, awesome, beautiful, yes. You would think you would ask for forgiveness. I'm going to show you the evidence from the Quran why he couldn't, why he didn't. Instead, he says this. This is what he says. I think I have a laser here. Laser works, yeah. This is what he's asking Allah. What does that mean? The translation is there. Read it out loud. Yeah, okay, that's good. Thank you. What is there is there's something really, really important that is missing from the translation. When we do the translation, it may not be obvious. Read the translation again, all of you. Read it again, see if you can pick pick something. I'm looking for something particular in there. Delay my end until the day of their resurrection. What does that mean? What can you see there? That does not doesn't jump out of you, obvious. Yeah. Asking for time. I'm looking for something else. Yes, he's asking for time. What else? Yeah, but there's something else. Yes, that's true. All of them are true. There's something else in here. That's also there's something else here. I'm gonna give you the Arabic. I'm not gonna give you the English. I'm gonna give you the Arabic. You extract it. Yuba'athun, this word. This is the key that I'm looking for. Yuba'athun. You're, you're on it. So here's what happened. This Adam, this Adam alayhi salam just got created. And all the angels did prostrations. And on the other side is all of you. Every single one of you from the, the very first day until the last day a human being is going to be on earth. All of us are there. All of us. From the Quranic uh, 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 ayat. All of us. And every single one of us talked to Allah. Every single one of us talked to Allah. Because he asked this question and we answered. All of us. So you spoke to Allah. You were at the presence of God. No doubt about it. Adam is laying down here or standing. Guess what he says? 
He says, give me time until all of these guys are going to be living on earth. He's looking at you and he's showing his utmost animosity, saying, all of you, I'm going to get you, every single one of you. Give me time until the day of their resurrection. It doesn't say until the day of Adam's resurrection because Adam is the one who caused the problem for him. That's not the problem. He's looking at every single one of you and me included and pointing fingers like, I'm going to get you guys. I'm going to get you guys good. That's, he shows his animosity to you from the get-go. Guess what Allah says? He's challenging Allah, right? Here's a simple answer. Allah says, all right. You want it? You got it. Go ahead. You got it. You'll be given time. Yeah, like some this dua. All right, so here's the other juicy part. Okay, why is it so juicy? This is incredibly juicy. Where have you seen this? A version of this. Suratak al Mustaqim. Where have you seen? He's the only one in answering this. These two. This is not fair. I'm going to pick on somebody. I'm going to pick on the, my smiley brother. Where have you seen that? Read it. Yes. Yes. Where have you heard that before? In the Fatiha. Exactly right. In Fatiha. Uh, uh, read it for me. Which part of the Fatiha? And what does it mean? That's an even more important question. Straight path. In Fatiha, we say, al-mustaqim. We ask Allah. Which means what? Minimum how many times a day? 17 times a day minimum if you do the only Salat al-Fard, only the Fard part, 17. If you do the Sunnahs, which you're supposed to do, is 32 times. You ask Allah with all passion, saying, Ya Allah, please, I'm begging you, guide me to the straight path. Guide me. It's actually a transition is a lot more. When, when we do Surah Al-Fatiha, you'll understand. On the straight path and along the straight path. That's what like, show me what I need to do properly. I want to be a good human being. That's what you're asking. Guess what he says? Paula, then shaitan speaks. And here's what he says, which is like amazing. You know what this means? Aghwaitani. Ah, sorry, I, I tried to get a projector because they give me a tiny TV. You couldn't have seen any of these things. Even the projector is small. I should push it all the way back. He's standing in front of God. He's looking at Allah and he's pointing finger at Allah and says, because of you did aghwaitani. Because you deceived me. You tricked me. You are the one who um, didn't give me the promotion that they needed. That I want it, that I need it, that I deserve the promotion. You didn't give it to me. Remember the promotion? He got the rank of angels and he wanted to be the next one. He, is, he has the guts. If this wasn't in the Quran, there would have no way I, could have, I would have said this to you. If I said anything like this, I knew a lightning was going to hit me, strike me right down, right in the spot. Someone has the guts to stand in front of God and point finger at God says, you are the one who deceived me. You're the one who tricked me. It's not me. This is the other thing that we do, devilish thing that we do in our livelihood. How many times do you find yourself saying, it's not me, it's you. How often do we do this? Especially when it comes to argument. How many of us actually are man enough, human enough to say, hey, um, I want to take accountability. I think I messed up. I want to make sure I can things, fix things. No, immediately he's like, it's not me, it's you. That's what exactly he says. It's not me, it's you. Oh God, you are the one who did this to me. And then he says these words. Those of you who understand Arabic, those of you who understand Arabic, let me put some things for you, okay? One, two, three, four. What am I writing? What does that mean? 
I gotta write it down here, man. This is one, this is two, this is noon is three and four. What is that? What am I writing? Sorry? Emphasis. As if I'm holding basil, I'm like, you listen to me. Here's what I'm going to do to you. This is what he's saying. He's saying four minimum, four different ways. He's like, God, I want to challenge you on this. I'm going to, for sure, without a doubt, I guarantee you that I swear I'm going to stand on their straight path. When they're asking 32 times a day that oh, Allah guide me, I'm going to show them a different path. I'm going to stand in front of it. I will never, ever allow them. He's challenging God. He's saying, this is what I'm going to do. Wow. Anytime that you want to do something right, he's going to be right in there. Right there, trying to show you a little different path. He is taking a, he's taking a um, oath. Four different ways. That doesn't show up on any translation. You have to like, He's like, I guarantee this is what I'm going to do. How is he going to do that? He's going to detail it on the next ayah. Right at the bottom. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to him from all directions you can imagine. All directions. So pay attention to this. I'm going to read the directions for you. Pay attention. See which one is there, which one is not there. I'm going to come in front of him. I'm going to come from his back. I'm going to come from his right. I'm going to come from his left. That's what he's, he's taking an oath. Which direction is not mentioned? Up is not mentioned. Because the revelation comes from the top. So he doesn't have any... He doesn't have any uh, uh, authority over there. He doesn't mention. What does this mean? Front, back, left, right, center, bottom, all that stuff. What does that mean? Give me examples. This is incredibly um, impactful for the media on a daily basis. Let's say um, from the front. What does that mean? Okay. Give me examples. Give me specific examples. How something that that is applicable that we do and we can't do because the Shaitan is on, on our path and preventing us. Right. Yes. All the centers are looking for funds for Palestine. Right? That's something you're supposed to do. You reach to your wallet and you look at the $20, you look at the $5, like um, 20, uh, I don't know, man, I need to eat lunch. You slip a five or a sub of, or, or a dollar, or you just like I, you know, I'd, hey, times are tough. Gas is six bucks a gallon. I don't really have a good job. Uh, maybe I can pass this time. Anytime something good comes, immediately the waswasa of shaitan at least is there to prevent you because he made a promise, Salatak al Mustaqim, on whatever you want to do. He's going to come in front of you. He's going to come in front of you and say, um, I don't know, think twice about it. Think really twice. These are, these are the real examples I'm going to give you that I've heard myself have seen. One of you go to Zaytuna College. And it happened. So Zaytuna College, attending that as a student. Someone from your family is going to come and say, um, what are you doing with your life? You gonna become a mullah? You gonna get a bachelor's of art of something? What are you gonna do with that degree? You're studying religious stuff. What what is that gonna do in this society in America? How does gonna how are you gonna live a life? Haven't you seen a smallest house is a million and a half? How what are you gonna do? I know students like that. They were passionate about it, and they heard this from their loving family members whether it were uncle or aunts or whoever it was, they dropped out of college, out of his 18 college, because like, hey, you know, they're right. What am I going to do with this? I don't want to be a Mulana. And look at all the graduates. I don't really see anyone doing anything stellar, which is so wrong. Those who graduated, they're doing phenomenal. Everyone that I know graduated, whether they 
took the religious path or they took some other path. They are doing phenomenal. Comes right in front of you and say, what are you doing? What are you wasting your time? What does this mean from the back? Anything, something happened horrible in the back. You did in, in, a, in, a, in a previous slide, like, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't really that bad. Look, the lightning didn't hit you. God is, God is merciful. God is forgiving. Come on, live a life. I was in a gathering, one of the, uh, you're not going to like this. I'm not going to say who, but I was one of the gatherings. I don't go to non-Muslim gatherings, so that should tell you. Somebody hand me uh, one of those bottles of exotic things. I'm like, no, thank you. So like, come on, what are you doing? Live a life, man. This is just chill, relax. You're too rigid. I'm like, no, thank you. I'd rather be rigid. You take that back to whatever you're doing. What is this? The thing I want to see is uh, the other one. And here's what, here's what happens in, um, in a religious setting or something good you want to do. Which is exactly what Shaitan did, right? What they least did. When you do something good, it boosts you. It's like, hey, you did so good. Hey, guess what? You did your Maghrib in Jama'ah. Hey, man, that, that got to be worth something, right? That's got to be something. You came for Fajr once in a blue moon. It's like, you came for Fajr. So it's, you know, you did something good. And here's what I've seen. I've heard and I've seen with my own ears and eyes. Someone who memorized a few ayat of Quran or watched a few YouTube videos and learned a few things like, hey, um, I want to lead the prayer next time. Why well, shouldn't be the one I lead the prayer? Why is, what is this guy? This uncle is trying to read the prayer. He can't even pronounce some of the things properly. You, it gives you that the license say, hey, I did something good. I deserve. I did something good. In your thinking, in your thoughts, like, I did something good. I deserve better. It gets you that way. It gets you, gets you in the things that you're doing good. It gets you in the things that you're doing marginally good. Or things that are not even that good. That gives you, it's not that bad. That's what he does. From all directions. All the time. Non-stop. Iblis is one, the head, and there's a bunch of millions. You know that, right? The little green things that you see. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. Countless of them. I think one of the brothers here said, they have a meeting. Did you know that they have a meeting up there? In the sky somewhere they meet? Or out in the ocean somewhere they meet? On a constant basis. The head, Iblis is there asking questions about all of them. So what did you do today? That's worthy. What did you do today? Ah, I did this. Ah, I did that. I messed up their financials. I messed up their business. I messed up their psyche. I messed up their mental health. Da, 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 all of those. Like, ah, okay, that was good. Ah, that was good. And one of the minions is going to say, guess what? Between Ahmed and Zulaikha, I made sure that they have an argument. I made sure that their marriage is not going to work well. Iblis is going to come here. Next, sit next to me. You did good. You're amazing. Which is all this. The, the Iblis's number one mission is to cause friction between husband and wife. All the time. The more, the better. Right. Questions? How do you protect yourself with this? Against this? How do you protect yourself? Yes. Very good. Yes, very good. Let me see if I have it here. Head of this. How many of you do this? How many, how many of you have no idea what I'm showing here, what this is? No, be honest. How many of you don't know at all? So there is a daily dua. There's a daily dua is highly, highly recommended by our uh, Prophet Islam, and all the scholars you can imagine. Um, one, of the, one of the booklets called Word al Latif, the beautiful um, supplications. One of the du'as is this. One of the du'as is this. It's exactly uh, to protect you from 
promise of shaitan, which is what? Allahumma fazni. Min bayni yadayya wa min khalfi wa an yamini wa an shamali. Right? Wa min fawqi wa a'udhu bi wa a'udhu bi azamataka an waqtala min tahdi. Covers all the directions. He made a promise that he's going to come, come at you from all directions. And you're asking Allah every day in the morning and evening saying, Ya Allah, protect me from this. Why? Because there's no way you can protect yourself except Allah's help. You should know that. You should know that because if someone has that much guts to stand in front of God and challenge him and point finger at him saying, you are the one who tricked me and this is what I'm going to do. There's no way you can protect yourself except to ask protection from Allah. Make sense? So, do this, morning and evening. There's a bunch of du'as, really easy, takes some 10 minutes or less, it will help you out. Okay. Allah says this, when he made a promise to, to Allah, said this is what I'm gonna do, Allah's response is this. Qala ukhruj minha. Get out of here. Madmuba madhura. Disgrace and rejected. Here, let me uh, let me uh, highlight this madhur for you. So the question becomes this. I'm gonna break the mystery immediately. The question is that I've asked, that I've been asked, and I, I pondered upon it myself. Like, wait a second, Shaitan made this this thing, this enormous thing. Why didn't he just ask for forgiveness? Why did he just so the Preview, part two of the thing. Shaitan did something and Adam did a mistake. Guess what Adam did? Yes, what did he do? Then what did he do after that? Yes, ask for forgiveness immediately. Very good. Ask for forgiveness immediately, right? He recognized it, he did. This idiot. He did this, instead of asking for forgiveness, he just went on a rampage and did whatever else he did. He didn't ask for forgiveness. Why? Why couldn't he do it? The key, the answer is to that, that word, manhuga. And I put it here. The amount of hate he has towards you, the amount of hate he has towards me and you as a human being, because we stole his thunder, that's what it is. It is to the point that it's really, truly preventing him from asking for forgiveness. It's just impossible. It's just not going to happen. He is not going, he's not capable of it. And that comes from this word. Okay? From that word. So Allah says this. Remember those four levels of emphasis? You saw that? And look at here. Allah says, you made a promise and here's my promise to you. Anyone follows you. Anyone from my slaves follows you. Allah says, la The same thing here. I'm going to put the same thing here. One, two, three, and four. The four level of emphasis, Allah says. Same way. I can guarantee you for sure without a doubt. Anyone from my slaves follow your lead. I'm going to toss them in Jahannam. All of you. All of you together. The choice is yours. The onus is on you. What does that mean? It's a really scary ayah, man. This is really, really scary ayah. Any one of us fall in that trick, uh, whatever direction he comes, and we even come, you know, the, the things that we gave already, examples, trying to be argumentative, trying to be life of a comparison, trying to um, <clears throat> Uh, always show boasting, do all the things that he's trying to do for you and I. If we fall in that trap and we don't turn back and we don't ask for forgiveness, we are part of this. May Allah save us from that. It's really scary, Aya. Questions? Yes. Oh, that, I, yeah, yeah, I forgot this. 
I forgot. Thank you for mentioning this. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I forgot. This is the most important part. How did I forget this? I'm going to attack all of them. Guess what? Here, uh, uh, thank you for pointing this. <coughs> he says, majority of them, you will not find something. Shakirin. You would expect to see, I would expect to see that majority of them, you'll find that they are not going to be obedience to you. Obedience to you. Or make ibadah or worship to you. That's not what he said. He said, you're not going to find majority of them not going to be shakir. Which means great, uh, grateful. Which means human being will be ungrateful. What does that mean? Where do we show ungratefulness? How do we show ungratefulness? This is very topical right now. Look at the what is what's going on in Gaza. Here's how we show ungratefulness. <clears throat> I've seen it in my household. You walk in. Open the fridge, <sighs> slam it back. There's nothing to eat. In my fridge, there's four to five different types of cheese, cheeses. There's juice, there's milk, there's cold water, there's sparkling water, and there's all kinds of cooked meal, prepared awesome meal, whether it's chicken, whether it's goat, or whatever that is. And there's at least three different types of bread in there. And with all the chutneys you can imagine, all the sauces, anything you can imagine. The fridge is filled with stuff. Open it like, God, there's nothing to eat. Hmm, I'm grateful. Open the closet. Open the closet. Hey, there's a, there's a gathering or there's a wedding or something. I have nothing to wear. What's up with this? I have six different suits. The girls and the family, the closet is so packed, you can't put anything there. I mean, walk in closet, not a closet, let it open. Walk in closet is half of a bedroom. There's no, there's no room. There are hundreds of dresses. I got nothing to wear today for tonight's event. There's a lot, those people in Gaza. This is the fifth day they haven't eaten anything because there's no food going through. There's no medicine. There's no fuel. There's no electricity. Many, many, many areas we show ungratefulness. Many areas. Why do you think everything we do starts with? Alhamdulillah. Praise and gratitude. Praise and gratitude. Praise and gratitude belongs to Allah. Is due to Allah. Gratitude has been mentioned everywhere. What happens if the temp temperature just raises a little bit? One day is 85 degrees, 80, 86 degrees, and we are huffing and puffing constantly. Seven days it was on the nice 60s. No one even mentioned that. And I suck. I'm sweating. I'm doing. I'm just showing all sorts of ungratefulness. There's so many different ways. He didn't say that you're not going to wash it. He knows you're going to wash it, but this is incredibly important. That's where he's going to attack you. Yes. Very nice, thank you. Very nice. Awesome. Is that what you're asking? Then my brother there that you said this ayah? Shocker? Yeah. Okay. And your question, yes. Not from the top, from the front, the back, right, and left. Also, he meant, didn't mention the top. What the scholars say is the revelation, the nur, the rahmah comes from the top from Allah. So he has no access to that one. In, he has no access to, to that. So he can't do anything about it. As a matter of fact, uh, in Surah Al-Mulk, that, that you hear about it, anytime they're trying to go up and do something, the, they're being shot with meteoroids. Rujum and Shayatina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Could be, yeah. So there's a lot of those. Yeah, could be. But what Allah says directly from the Quran saying, those stars are being, that you see flashes, are, those are the shaitans are being shot at, pelted constantly. Um, With that, I don't know. That's, there's, that could be. That could be. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. So that's what it is. That's what the scholars say. They, from the up, where the nur is, where the light is, where the revelation is, he, they have no access to that one. Okay, I think this might be my last one. Here's what Allah says. Shaitan is your number one enemy. So take him as your, take him as that enemy. Protect yourself. Guess what he does? His number one mission and all the mission that all the time that he has, he invites all his followers to do what? To, be, to become ashab, the occupants, the companions of a sa'ir, a blazing fire. And he has a bunch of other missions which is on part two, if we ever come to that. That's the take home message. Okay, that's it. I think that's my last one. Do I have anything else left? No. Questions, comments? Yes. His end game is right there. It's right there. He wants all the followers, everyone to, so here's the thing. That's part number two that I didn't discuss. That's a PG-13. There's a specific goal he has. His goal is not for you to deny God. His goal is to disobey God any which way you can. Because he thinks God deceived him. He thinks God owes him and God went against his promise, which God never promised him. His thing is, what is it that he can do to constantly make you do what God says, the, uh, what God says to do, to go against it? Does that make sense to you? Oh, he does. His, this is his. This is his mission. He's going to be, you know, qaida. Um, it's an ambush. means I am going to sit on an ambush on this path. Whatever that you and I are trying to do, go to do something right, he's going to be there. He's going to come on an ambush. You know how an ambush works? It's a hidden enemy. It's not exposed. It's hiding constantly and just comes and grabs you by surprise. That's his mission. He said it himself. I don't have to spell it out. Any other comments? Questions? We get about 20 minutes before Aisha. It's all out of rage, all out of arrogance, all out of saying, you know how human being works. You did this to me, I'm going to hurt you five times more. That's exactly what's happening in Gaza, right? That's exactly what's happening. You slap me once, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch you to death. You deceived me, you didn't give me the promotion, guess what I'm going to do? You think human beings so awesome, you created this human being and you gave him a choice? I'm going to make sure that they always make the wrong choice just to spite you, just to get back at you. He's challenging God. I'm going to get back at you and you're not going to, you're not going to see these people are going to be grateful. So he's sitting in a, in a Surat al-Mustaqim. And the second thing is that um, this one, the one you explained it really beautifully. You cannot be grateful. That means Nothing is enough. If you have $100,000 in your bank account, you're like, I don't have enough. I want five hundred. When you get a five hundred, you're like, a million would be nice. When you get a million, you're like, you know what? That lottery, $1.5 billion, that would be nice. The guy who just won the lottery had nothing. Had nothing. And suddenly one point, what is it? One point two billion or something? It's like, mm. the uh, government said, I'm going to give you $700 million. Lump sum, what do you think? It's like, no, that's not enough. 1.3 billion will be nice. $700 million. I'm not advocating go play lottery. That's not what I'm saying. 
no matter what you have, just like you said, you're never going to be grateful. You're always like, I want more. Yes. It's certainly one of them. It certainly is one. Ungratefulness. And it, and it plays in our life dramatically. It's, it's unbelievable how much it plays in our life. No, fire. Yeah. That's directly from the Quran. Jinn made out of fire. They don't have Allah's roof. I don't know about the angels. I don't know about the angels. His issue, his issue is, uh, his issue is right there. So, yeah. 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 That's his issue. Arrogance. He wanted Adam's position. So he wanted Adam's position. He wanted to be the one with chosen to go to earth to carry the mission. But Allah all along knew that he has this hidden thing in him. From elsewhere in the Quran, we learned that he always had this hidden uh, arrogance and, and kibber and arrogance and boasting in him all the time. Because Allah knows that. Allah created him. He just happened to expose himself at this instant. But it's not something that God didn't know. It's like, oh, God just came up like, oh, wait a second. That's not how it is. Allah always knew about it. Sorry, you said you had something? Oh, certainly Shaitan is whispering. Obviously, Shaitan is whispering, but it's just... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask protection from Allah all the time. Learn. Knowledge will help. Learn. And then ask for protection. Because this, these tendencies we all have. Just talk about arrogance. Just talk about arguments. Just talk about um, lashing back. We all have that. Yeah. Exactly right, yeah. Exactly. The more we the more we open ourselves to the shaitan, the more we're gonna get influenced. It's it's like this. Um, who gave me an example? One of the one of the guys, one of the scholars gave me an example, it's like when you enter to a room full of smoke, or those who people smoke, you sit around them for, for the first time, you're like, Oh man, this is this is kinda not so good. But sitting with them for 30 minutes, you became used to it. You're just like, ah, whatever. The next day, same thing. You don't feel it. You don't, you don't get hurt by it that much. The first instance of shaitan doing the waswasa or whispering, then we might get impacted that we were like, but if we more expose ourselves to it, the more we become kind of status quo. And that's what the scary part is. That's what the power of dua comes in. So uh, you, you said a key word. 
there's a direct um, ayah from the Quran. Allah says, Shaitan has no power, no power over my uh, believing um, servants, slaves, Allah says. So which means, so long as you and I are believing and what, what we're trying to do, he has no power. And also there's another uh, ayah from the Quran that I mentioned this to you. At the end of the day, next life, shaitan is going to say, Allah's promise were true. And all I did made some suggestion to you. And I have absolutely no power over you or to you to make anything to you. You just decided on your own. You chose based on my suggestion. So he is the, the notion that we think that shaitan is powerful and has, oh, that's not what it is. His whispers are powerful. He has millions of years of his experience. He will be able to deceive you and I very easily if we don't ask for the protection from the one who created him, from the one who knows him and knows you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, <clears throat> no. What he what he did do is exactly what you said he did. But he saw all three things, and he purposefully tried to hide the other two. Remember, there are three things we said. Process created from the clay. Allah beautified, balanced human being, fashioned him, and then gave him his rule. He wanted to ignore the last two. All he wanted to concentrate, thinking that he can deceive anyone, saying, clay. Clay is not as good as fire. We know that. Clay is just a clay. Fire is fire. But the other two aspects that makes us far better creature, as opposed to just a um, you know, gin and fire. So he purposely is trying to hide that and see if he can continue his deception. And he believes in it. Remember one of the things that we said, when we have a feeling ourselves and we keep on repeating the feeling to ourselves, at some point we're going to believe in that feeling, saying this is the truth, even though the facts are against it. He's like, no, this has to be true. That's exactly what he did. Yes. Uh, Surat Al-A'raf. Uh, so I went through, um, what is it? I had, went there, 11 to 18. Surat Al-A'raf, 11 to 18. After 18 through 29 is incredible. PG-13, second part about the creation of Adam and all that. You can see what he did to Adam. It is amazing. It's just amazing to listen and hear and read it and all that. So if, if there's interest, we can do that, inshallah. By the way, next Friday, I'm going to do the same thing with Dua of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. One passage, one Dua, and what does that Dua mean today for us? So if you're interested, show up and we'll go through that. It's really interesting. To me, it's really interesting. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. That's that's possible, yeah. Among jinns are his minions, his followers, and among jinns are some good ones too, Muslims too. But I'm sure that is. I, I, I don't know too much about that. We're good? Alhamdulillah. Thank you all. May Allah give us, uh, um, bless us for understanding this.